Oh, look. Someone's complaining about racism in Baldur's Gate. It must be a day ending in Y because there's yet another person complaining about racism in video games. The game, Baldur's Gate 3. The problem, it depicts racism. Now, I know what you're thinking, but no, it's not some right winger complaining that the game's gone woke. No, it's some probable progressive complaining that the tieflings, a race descended from someone who made a deal with the devil, are treated like trash by other races, including members of your own party. And this is somehow a bad thing because reasons. From Twatter, from who I'll call the whiniest tiefling ever, quote, the racism in Baldur's Gate is genuinely so fucking hard on me. Playing a tiefling as a black person is brutal. Your party members antagonize you, the game antagonizes you, and the plot positions you as a bad guy if you don't help the druids calling you slurs. Well, I'm black and I'm playing as a tiefling, and I didn't get the feeling that the plot was forcing me to be the bad guy. I did get the impression that as a tiefling I was in a no-win situation because siding with either the druids or the tieflings would make the other side resent me. But that's part of the role-playing. Tieflings are hated because of what they look like, so this is what happens when you play that out. If it bothers you to play a race that's subjected to constant racism, you could pick another of the remaining ten races. Well, maybe not half-orcs or Githyanki or drow because they seem to be despised too. I'm not sure about the other races since I'm not that familiar with the world of Dungeons and Dragons, but some of the other races could face prejudice too. That said, the whole idea with D&D is role playing, so if you're going to be this precious about depictions of racism, you should take the time to learn about the different races before you choose. I picked the tieflings because I thought they looked cool. I didn't know anything about them, but that's the fun part for me. I like discovering the world by seeing how people react to the character. If that's not your jam, this might not be the game for you. Also, you have choices in the dialogue, and I suspect that you chose all the tiefling choices, which come across as hostile, which would affect how the NPCs and party members respond to you, so maybe pick different choices. I'm playing as a paladin, sworn to vengeance, so I try to respond like Batman, and pick the paladin choices when they fit the role, and that affects how people respond to my character. Again, I'm role-playing. That's the point. So this tweet went viral and people jumped in with a community note saying that the tieflings are half devil and evil, but that's not true. One of their ancient ancestors made a pact that infused them with the essence of Asmodeus, overlord of the Nine Hells, and that's why they look like devils. However, while they inherited certain demonic powers, nothing about them being a tiefling makes them inherently evil. As far as I can tell, D&D lore acknowledges that much of the negativity attributed to the tieflings is due to how they're treated. In general, they're just like regular people complex, multifaceted, and capable of being good or evil. That should be apparent from interacting with the tieflings in the Grove, so I'm guessing the people who made the note haven't played Baldur's Gate or D&D. Nevertheless, the whiniest tiefling continues, quote, Like if I don't help the druid who was come to execute a child of my race for being of my race, I lose access to Karlak. I save the druids and they insinuate I'm a disease. If I fail the druid quest, a massacre of my people is on my hands. What the fuck? What the fuck indeed, cause that's not what happened to me. I found Karlak after I went to the Grove and got into it with Korga over the Little Thief. Also, you don't have to help the Druids. In fact, Roth tells you that if you find Halsin, the actual leader of the Druids, that should solve the problem with Davina Koresh. So why don't you just go to the Goblin Camp and save him like several Druids and Tieflings suggest you do? You have choices, so I don't know how you're screwing this up. Or maybe I do. Quote, I come home from a long day of microaggressions and masking, and then my guard is immediately back up. I should be stressed that I'm making bad decisions, not because Lazel keeps threatening to kill me in my sleep for having horns. And for white players, this is just fantasy. Dude, you don't live in 1963. I know you wish you did, but you don't. So stop it. It's just the game. Lazel is violent. She's like this with everyone. If you do a couple of story missions where you stand your ground and fight, she gets super turned on and wants to bone you immediately. This is all up to you and your choices. If you don't like the result, reload the last save and try a different response. Then the whiniest tiefling responds to all the interactions. Quote, I didn't expect this much traction off of this. I like this game. It's a good game. Everybody's going to feel different. If you're white and taking a moral stance over the game that's louder than BIPOC, then consider if you're doing that to feel good about yourself. Y'all be easy. Well, I'm not white, and I'm telling you that your reaction to the game is overblown. 
the tieflings are supposed to be victims of racism. That's part of the lore of the world. If you don't like this, if it bothers you that much, you have options. Play another race. But apparently that's no bueno. Quote, Y'all really don't need to tell me more about Karlak. I promise even if I'm wrong, which still seems unclear, and she can't be locked out, it does affect your relationship with her and Will, and the racism is the point. It's super fucking unnecessary. No, it's storytelling. It's world building. It's the reason you're playing the game. Do you not want the game to have elements of realism to it? Do you think that in a real medieval setting, if people saw humanoids with horns and tails who smelled of sulfur, that they would welcome these people? That's what D&D lore is playing on. So if you don't like it, play as an elf or a dwarf or a halfling. Then the whiniest tiefling complains about the clapbacks in the quote tweets. Quote, All right, the QTs are a goddamn cesspool. I never said I don't play the game. I said repeatedly, I love it. It's good to deal with racism in fiction, but doing it so disproportionately affects BIPOC. Do y'all think we prance around every day not experiencing a lick of discrimination? Yeah, I'm black and from Chicago. We don't. There is plenty of discrimination, but no, you're not spending every second of every day getting hammered with racism. Also, if you think it's good to deal with racism in fiction, why are you complaining? Clearly what Larian depicts is powerful enough to bother you. Don't you think people who rarely experience that kind of bias could benefit from playing the tiefling and seeing what it's like for people to casually hate you? This is literally the point of telling that kind of story. Why do you have a problem with it? Well, the whiniest tiefling tells us why. Quote, Tieflings, orcs, goblins, and drow are heavily steeped in racist, bioessentialist lore. Attaching intrinsic morality to race is not creative. I don't blame Larian for this. It's not their lore. But there are far more interesting conflicts that have nothing to do with race. And you would discover them if you played the rest of the game and not just fixated on this one section with the Grove. This idea that there's something racist about the lore is just nonsense. Creators are allowed to explore real-world conflicts like racism, and they shouldn't have to sugarcoat it because people are too sensitive about it on either side of the political aisle. Again, if this bothers you, you can play a different race. Larian lets you avoid the issue for the most part, so just change your race. You're not locked into any skin tone or facial structure, so you can make a black or Hispanic or Asian elf or gnome or human or whatever. The choice is yours, literally. So why are you complaining? Like y'all really don't see the problem with a devil did something evil and so all its descendants for the rest of the time are evil. You don't see the problem with categorizing a large swath of people as evil and calling them pejoratives based on their appearance slash heritage? Of course they do. That's the point. And if they don't, they'll see why it's wrong by playing as a tiefling. That's also the point. If the tiefling druid conflict in the grove was really about the tieflings being refugees and not their race, the druids at the gate wouldn't have yelled slurs. The druid missing the locket inside wouldn't have threatened to beat a tiefling child for stealing it from him, etc. I know, right? It's almost like Larian was making a point about how racism can play out in many different ways, like people hiding behind other issues. This is exactly the kind of story people need to see so they can understand the different forms bias can take. But here you are whining about people doing that. And it's funny to watch y'all go, not all druids. So you can do that, but you can't point out that even my traveling companions, whose favor I've earned, implying that I'm good for a devil, is really gross. Y'all over here going, all fictional lives matter. Come on. Again, you precious little snowflake. That is the point. Even your companions who like you and will eventually want to shag you rotten can also have prejudices and biases. And don't play a tiefling slash drought isn't a solution. I challenge y'all to be brave enough to critique the media you consume. Critiquing something isn't the same as condemning it. I know I've pointed out something specific and right here because overwhelmingly BIPOC are speaking up. You aren't critiquing. You're complaining. And your complaint isn't that they're doing it badly or that they're missing the point or that they're oversimplifying it. You're just complaining that the lore has a temerity, the unmitigated gall, to depict what racism looks like. That's it. That makes it sound like you think that they shouldn't show any bias in their lore. That's insane because there are dozens of races in D&D. Eventually, there's going to be some group they don't like for whatever reason. This whole thing comes across like you're just complaining to complain, which the whiniest tiefling goes on to basically prove. Quote, It's not bad faith to ask why BIPOC don't get the same level playing field in media. From character creators to stereotypes to in-game parallels to our real trauma, we are constantly misrepresented. Meaningful depictions of race does not equal forcing BIPOC to relive trauma without consent. Child, please, you are not reliving any trauma. Stop playing the victim. 
Tieflings don't represent any specific real world group. Neither do the Drow, Orcs, Half Orcs, Githyanki, or the Dragonborn. You can pick any other race, make your character Eddie Murphy Black, Precious Purple, or a Beige Bitch, and no one will say anything to you. No one's misrepresenting your fake real trauma. You're just projecting and ruining your own fun in the process. You have 11 races to choose from. No one is forcing you to play the Devilkin. But that's too much to ask. Quote, and again, I like the game. I really do. Come to your own conclusions about whether or not you want to play based on your comfort. I'm not telling anyone to boycott or anything. But the fantasy racism is ingrained into the story and it really does get tiring. That's all I said. If only there were a solution. Wait, scratch that. Six solutions to that problem. If only you could play as a human, an elf, a half-elf, a dwarf, a halfling, or a gnome, and rarely, if ever, have to deal with any racist treatment in the game. Oh wait, you can do that? Then why don't you do that? And if it's this much of a problem for you, play another game. I honestly, genuinely find these arguments to be so stupid. Creators have the right to talk about these topics, and if you don't want to hear them, then find something else. It's not a critique to just say that the game has content you don't like. You've got to explain why that's a problem and that problem needs to go beyond your personal taste. And when people present solutions to that problem, you shouldn't just outright dismiss them. You don't have to play as a tiefling. But if you do play as one, in D&D lore, everyone hates them and most people treat them terribly as a result. Nobody's changing the lore because you feel bombarded by microaggressions every day. Choose another race, suck it up and deal with it, or don't play the game. But don't act like Larian did something wrong by showing what racism looks like in the world of D&D. It's true to Dungeons & Dragons lore and adds realism to the game. If it bothers you, find another game. Try Final Fantasy 16. Heard that one's a blast. But what do I know? I'm just some guy. Oh, I know. I know what's in Final Fantasy 16. I know exactly what it's about. That's why I picked it.